Hello, let's look at gestational diabetes treatment and we will focus in on insulin. We dealt with metformin and glubaride in another video. Now, I want you to get a taste for it uh, by giving you some statistics. We have a gestational diabetic patient now. What do you think the risk is for this pregnant woman to get another gestational diabetes in the second pregnancy? 50%. This is very, very high. So the next, second pregnancy is the likelihood of she getting another problem, another complication, which is gestational diabetes, is 50%. So one out of every two women will eventually get that also. What about metabolic syndrome? You know, hypertension, obesity, and all this stuff which you have in metabolic syndrome, like high levels of lipids. 30% of gestational diabetic patients will eventually get metabolic syndrome. 30%, one out of three. How common do you think diabetes two is after a gestational diabetes? 10%. So these are very, very high numbers, and very, very severe diseases. So therefore, now you appreciate why this, this presentation is important. Why is it important to treat gestational diabetes and detect any type of type two diabetes after the pregnancy, detect any metabolic syndrome, and detect uh, any gestational diabetes in the second pregnancy? So now let's look at the treatment. We have treatment, we, have, we can classify them into metformin or insulin, or uh, if uh, the patient is having contraindications to metformin, then we can give glubaride. So today we are looking at metformin. And why we know that, no, not metformin, insulin. Because insulin, as we know, is the most effective treatment for gestational diabetes, most effective. There are patients who don't want to inject some insulin because this is an injection, a subcutaneous injection. And some pregnant women just don't like it. And therefore they ask the doctor to please give some tablets instead. And then we give metformin. But actually 30% of these patients, of these pregnant women taking metformin will eventually anyway need insulin. And that is the sad thing about this. So many patients need insulin anyway, regardless of starting with metformin. So that's one thing. Why is insulin the best? Because we can titrate it. The dose can be titrated limitless. Metformin is given a tablet form. You get one dose of 500 milligram or 850 milligram. Whereas insulin can be given one unit, two unit, three unit, and you can really titrate it up, up and down, depending on which, uh, which uh, severity we have of this disease. What type of insulin do we have? We have, for example, rapid acting one, we have intermediate acting one, and we have a long acting one. This just means that how fast is this insulin reaching the body, reaching the blood and causing the effect of it? Is it rapid, is it intermediate, or is it long acting? It, it just also means that how long, for how long time do this insulin act? For example, long acting can act, for example, 24 hours or 72 hours, whereas rapid acting one is acting in 10 minutes and then have an effect for one to maybe three hours maximum. So you see, this is the difference here. For how much time do we want the insulin effect? Rapid acting one, which, which one do we have here? For example, insulin, Lispro, Aspart or Glulisin, for example. Gestational diabetic patients usually need Aspart or Lispro because these are the safest one in gestational diabetes. These have been studied the most. What type of intermediate acting do we have? Neutral protamine Hagedone, it's called. What type of long acting do we have? For example, Detamir or Glargin. Detamir is the one that we prefer in gestational diabetes. Why? Because it has been studied the most and because we can give it two times daily and so on. Glargin, for example, this is also very good long acting, but instead we will give it in type 2 diabetic patients and not really here in gestational diabetes. So this, this is not, I'm not saying that Glargin is not good, it's very good medication, but Detamir rather here in gestational diabetes. So that is, for example, the classification. So we have dealt with some statistics, with some classification, but what do we tell the mother? What, what, how can we educate the mother? We will tell her, for example, how to use this injection pen that she will get in her hand. What is the injection technique? This is very important to, to teach the woman. We also need to teach 
how to dose. So we have multiple doses of uh, these injections. One has to be given, for example, before bedtime, one has to be given before breakfast, one has to be given before each meal, and this has to be taught. This is very hard to do. Then, of course, we need, we need to teach the woman to self-monitor, so meaning she will take a blood sample, uh, she will puncture the finger, she will take this device, and then she will measure how much glucose she has in her body at the right moment. This has to be taught also. This is not so easy. Then we have to, of course, uh, uh, explain to her that she needs to write it down on a chart. Every blood value has to be written down. And then the most important thing, we have to teach diet also together. So it's not enough to only have insulin. We need to have diet together with insulin. And uh, the woman has to be taught that for example, if uh, she's having a pregnancy uh, later on in life, why it is important that we will detect it. So information about the next pregnancy. Okay, good. That was, uh, for example, education. Then we have, for example, uh, the dosing. Dosing of insulin, or we can talk about, uh, for example, which, which, which dose of insulin do we give at which moment. Let's take an example. Uh, a woman is complaining that the fasting plasma glucose, or we will do like this instead. Let's, let's look at the blood values instead. I think this is more important if, that we take the blood values instead before starting with doses. The first question I always ask, when or which woman do we actually need to give insulin to? We will check the glucose levels of this woman and if more than one third of blood values of this woman is higher than the target level, which is less than 95 milligram per deciliter in the fasting, meaning in the morning or before, uh, before breakfast, nine, less than 95 milligram per deciliter, or in another unit, less than 5.3 millimole, or one hour postprandial, meaning one hour she's she's eating something, breakfast or, or lunch, and then one hour later, we see that we have a value that is less than 140 milligram per deciliter, or one can say less than 7.8 millimole per liter. So if you have a woman now that has any type of value that is above these ones that I to told you, in more than one third of the measurements, then we can start with insulin. And that is important. Another, because we have different values. These were the values to start insulin. The other values that we can talk about is, for example, if the, we have a gestational diabetic patient, she is delivering, and after delivery, four, four week to 12 week in this span, we will make another oral glucose tolerance test. We will give her 75 gram of sugar. And if this 75 gram of sugar shows a certain value, then we can diagnose the patient of having type 2 diabetes. As we said, 10% of gestational diabetic women will eventually get diabetes 2. So it's important that we already, in week 4 to 12, measure this value of the oral glucose tolerance test. If the fasting plasma glucose level is then more than 126 mg per deciliter or more than 7 mmol per liter, this shows a diabetes, but we have another value, which is two hours later, two hours later of this 75 gram of glucose. If that shows more than 200 milligram per deciliter or more than 11.1 .1 millimole, then we have a diagnosis of diabetes type two, and then we need to treat it accordingly. Okay, that was, for example, these values. If we have, for example, hypoglycemia. So I'm, I'm giving you all kind of values here just, just to make a brainstorm here. So hypoglycemia is when we have, for example, less than 60 milligram per deciliter. This is in the other direction. This is too less of glucose. In this case, we need to treat it. First of all, we need to decrease the insulin dose because if we, if we have hypoglycemia for more than once per day, for several days, then it's dangerous. We need to really de uh, decrease the insulin dose. So we never get below 60 milligram per deciliter. And the treatment uh, when we have a woman who has less than 60 milligram per deciliter, meaning she has hypoglycemia, is to give a low fat milk. Low fat milk, instead of giving sugar. 
Why, why, do, why do we give low-fat milk? It contains carbohydrates and protein. And these two together is dampening this high spike and then a, a, a very fast decrease. So it's important that we instead give this low-fat milk, which contains around eight, so we can give around eight ounces or 250 milliliter of low-fat milk, and that will be much, much better than giving glucose. Okay? Uh, now, let's look at the dosing of insulin. This is very important also. How, what is the total dose of insulin you think per day? This can be uh, calculated with the, for, uh, with the following formula. 0.7 unit per kilogram of weight of this pregnant woman. 0.7 unit per kilogram of the total dose per day. And that is if the pregnant woman is less than 12 weeks in, in, in the pregnancy. If it's between 12 weeks and 26 weeks, we, we increase it with one more, so 0.8. Uh, so if it's 26 to 36, then it's one more, 0.9. More than 36 until delivery, then one unit per kilogram. That's the total dose. We divide usually the dose of intermediate acting and the rapid acting insulin in around 50-50% of the dose, of this total dose. For example, if the woman is having very high fasting plasma glucose, meaning in the morning before breakfast, the glucose is very high, then we can start with an intermediate acting, so this neutral protamine hagedone, for example. We start with the intermediate acting before bedtime. And before bedtime, we will give 0.2 unit per kilogram of intermediate one. If instead we have not just not only a, a, a very high level in the morning, but we have a high level preprandial and postprandial, meaning before breakfast or before meal and after meal, then we give intermediate acting one before bedtime and before breakfast. So you see here instead we give two doses of intermediate. We usually give, if the patient is having very severe diabetes, also rapid acting one. And we can then calculate that we have around five injections, sometimes six injections. We had two intermediate one, and then we had around three, uh, three rapid one, and this is five. And we said that those will be around 50-50% of rapid and uh, intermediate. And the rapid one is given before each meal. So before each meal, before it, uh, because it gets into the body and then you start to eat, then the glucose rises, but you already has some insulin to, to back it up. And therefore we can uh, give, for example, a rapid acting one before each meal. And how do you calculate it? This has to be calculated uh, according to how much carbohydrate you eat, how much sugar you eat. So for example, if you have uh, each, for example, each 10 gram of carbohydrate needs, for example, in the breakfast, 1.5 unit of rapid acting one. In lunchtime and in dinner time, you have around one unit per, uh, per, kilogram, per 10 gram of carbohydrate. And therefore, depending on how much you eat, you can then uh, get the right amount. So this woman needs to measure the, the glucose level when awake, so when she is awake, and so in the before breakfast, and then she measures it before each meal. And that is very important because then you can divide these doses. Okay? So I think this would be enough for today. Thank you very much for listening. Bye bye.